All right, guys, gonna go over Project Euler, problem four here, in C, uh, programming and math at the same time, yeah. Uh, this one will be a little bit different. I'm mainly gonna give you like a synopsis of, uh, of what I did to finish it. I got the, the solution here, but like, it took me about two hours to get that because I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Um, but I figure instead of, you know, a freaking two hour video of nonsense, I'm just gonna give you I'm gonna retype what I did and try to go through it in a little bit clearer understanding way um, and do that. Go over the synopsis of the answer. So, because I don't want to bore you with two hours of nonsense, but yeah. So, you know, include your things. Um, this is the largest palindrome product. We should only need the standard I.O. header. I was messing with like strings and character arrays for this one, but it's not really needed as you'll you'll see. But uh, we have the largest palindrome product, problem four. A palindromic number reads the same both ways. So a palindrome is a word that reads the same both ways, such as when you click outside of your notepad. Uh, no, palindrome is a word that reads the same both ways, like race car or boob, so. You know, it's it's the same. The letters are in the same order, forwards and backwards. But palindromic number reads the same both ways. The largest palindrome made from the product of two two-digit numbers is 9,009, 91 by 99. Find the largest palindrome made from the product of two three-digit numbers. So we're gonna need a couple variables to hold our three-digit numbers. Then we're also gonna make one to hold the product of those numbers. Um, and then you'll see later, we wanna read it the same forwards and backwards. So we're gonna, I'm, I call it reverse prod or reverse product. And then we also want the largest. We're gonna have one that is set equal to the max. So I'm just checking the audio's balance, okay. Um. We want one that is backwards of the product to read it forward and backwards, and then we're also going to use um, a reverse number. We're gonna use the product reverse and also a number that's gonna be reverse. You'll see, you'll see. But this is what we're gonna do. Um, and then I started out by just having the max initialized to zero. All right, now we're finding the largest palindrome from the product of two three-digit numbers. Three digits, meaning the minimum they can be is 100 and the maximum they can be is 999. Any more would be four digit, any less than 100 would be two digit. So, we're gonna wanna read through all three digit numbers. Uh, be an integer, there aren't any decimal places in this particular problem, although it doesn't explain that. So three digit integers, positive, whole numbers. Um, but to read through all of those, because we're gonna wanna find, we're gonna wanna read through, you know, 100 times 100 to start off get the product, see if it reads the same forward and backwards, and then if it does, see if it's greater than the max and set it equal to the max. That's basically what we're going to be doing. But to increment through all the three-digit numbers, we're going to need a for loop. Uh, you can use another one, but I'm going to use a for loop because it's easier for me to understand. We'll set it equal to the minimum, 100. You could set it to 1, but you just, you're just you you're not going to use the first 99 iterations. So might as well set it equal to 100, you know? We're going to do less than 1,000. You could do less than or equal to 900 but we're just gonna do it this way, cause why not? <laughs> Center equal to a thousand, we're gonna do the same thing for our second number, uh, in this case being y. We'll have for y equal to 100, y less than a thousand, to stop at 999, and y plus plus to increment. It's kinda Christmas sounding, it's all right. All right, now we're in the four loops. Each time we're gonna iterate through, it's gonna start at 100 times 100, then it'll go Y101, X101, you know, so on and so forth. Um, to start off, we want to get the product of these two numbers, prod cut. We wanna get the product, which of course is X times Y. Uh, and then we want to check, we're gonna wanna check if the product is a palindrome or not. So I'm gonna start off by setting my reverse product, which we're gonna change in a minute. We're gonna set it equal to the product. 
we're gonna set our reverse number equal to zero. I'll see why I call it these things in a second. And we're gonna have a while loop. We're gonna do while the reverse product is greater than zero. We're basically, we're gonna take our original product and we're gonna keep, um, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna hack off, we're gonna slice off the last digit and then put it into our other variable reverse. Our reverse is gonna slice off the last digit of the product and then we're gonna put it into the other variable reverse product. You'll see. We're basically, we're gonna take our number. We want it to be greater than zero because we're not gonna have a palindrome of zero. We want it to be positive. That's what we're doing. But we're gonna take a number like one, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna get it to where we separate the five so that we'll have one, two, three, four, right? And then we're gonna put the five in a separate in a separate variable. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the number that's left. We're gonna take the four out. And then we'll have five, four, and one, two, three. And we're basically gonna do that until we get the reverse number. Five, four, three, two, one. And then we're gonna check if that number is equal um, to the beginning number we started with. In this case it's not, so it's not a palindrome. But if it's equal, then the number will read the same forwards and backwards, and it will be, therefore, a palindrome. So that's basically what we're gonna do here. That's your, your simple pseudocode, if you understood it. Hopefully you did, maybe you didn't. I don't know. But we're gonna use our reverse variable. We're gonna set it equal to itself times 10. And we're gonna add to that uh, reverse prod, which at this point is the same as product. Um, modulus 10. So reverse right now it's zero. It'll be zero equals zero plus our original product modulus 10. Um, and what this is going to do is divide our original number by 10. And um, if there's a remainder, it's not going to count it because it's an integer. So it's going to like round down, I think, or maybe round up. I'm not too sure. I know this works, though. <laughs> and afterwards, we're going to get the reverse product equals, uh, well, equals itself divided by 10. I'm not, I'm not going to be great at explaining this because I'm kind of still having a little bit of trouble understanding it myself, but I know it does it does work <laughs> with these two things as long as it's above zero, but it basically does what I explained before. Like the first number we're going to get on the first iteration of this is 100 times 100. That's what it's going to start out as. And that'll equal 100 plus two more zeros, which will be 10,000. So the first time what's going to run through is it's going to say 0 equals 0 times 10 is 0 plus 10,000 modulus 10. This isn't the greatest number to, to do this with because it's not going to be palindrome. But it'll take 10,000 modulus 10. It's going to like hack off this 0. And then reverse product equals itself divided by 10. Um, which is what hacks off the 0. The reverse, it equals 0 plus the product modulus 10, that gets the last digit. This reverse variable will basically be equal to the last digit. So in this case, it'll equal the last zero. So this isn't this isn't really the best thing to understand. Let me let me go back to the original. Um, let's just put x and y here. We'll put x and y, and we're gonna say this is the the two three four five number. So that's easier to understand. So if your number, if your product equals this on the first run through, your reverse is gonna equal zero on the first, zero plus reverse product, which is equal to product at this point, modulus 10. Basically that's gonna take the last digit and it's gonna insert that into reverse. So that's gonna equal five. And then after you do that, rev prod equals itself divided by 10. Let's turn that down a little bit. <laughs> And by rev prod equaling itself divided by 10, you're going to take off the 5. So you're putting you're putting the 5 into reverse, you're copying it, and then you're taking it off. So this was what it's going to be on the first run through. On the second run through, you're going to... That's going to be gone. This is the original product. You're going to 
gonna have one, two, three, four. Or well, Rev Prod will be one, two, three, four product. Let's do original. And this. Okay, so this will be after the first run through. The second run through, you're gonna have five equals five times ten, which will be fifty. Plus reverse product modulus 10, which is going to take the 4 off, and it's going to put it into here. Does that make sense? You're going to take the 4, you're going to copy it into here, the last digit, and then reverse product is itself divided by 10, you're going to, you're going to take that off. Because we don't, we don't get a remainder with integers, so it basically gets rid of the last digit. So this is the second run through, you're going to have 54, 1, 2, 3. Now the third run through, you're going to go through, and you'll get... 540 because it's itself times 10 plus this modulus 10 so you're gonna take the 3 and you're gonna put it into here And after you divide by 10 the 3 is gonna leave right So you see so on and so forth the next run through you're gonna get the 2 and this is gonna go on And then the final run through you're gonna get the 1 and then you got the 1 and then, after that, if you if you divide by 10, 1 divided by 10 is going to be um, basically 1 tenth, but since there's no remainder, it's going to count it as 0. It's going to round down to 0. And then it'll end. But after all that, you'll have this. You'll have reverse equal to basically the reverse of the original product. Hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, well, oh well. <laughs> I just speak through it real slow the other day when I did this, but yeah. And then you're gonna check if the reverse equals the original product. You're gonna set these equal, and if it's true, then it'll read forwards and backwards the same, and therefore, it'll be palindrome. So I'll just put product is a palindrome. I could have done this in a separate like, um, well, an RPG, it's a sub-procedure, what, what I do with it word, but here it's just, you know, you can call it a separate function. Um, you can put in a separate function, but you can just do it here, it's, it's, it's fine. You can do it in line, or however you call it. And if it is equal to the product, equal to itself reversed, then it's a palindrome. After you want to do that, you want to check if it's greater than the current maximum product, the current maximum number, because we're trying to find the largest palindrome. So if it is equal to the current maximum number, then it is the largest palindrome at this point, and you're gonna set max equal to product. So all in all, it's, it's fairly simple. Go outside the if, let's go outside the for loops. So we're gonna print the number percent D. Um, we don't have to do new line, but we'll do new line anyway. Max. And that should give you the correct answer. Let's get everything in the same window here. All right, and this should be the correct answer for Project Euler problem four. I uh, name this four A as it's a copy of four. Oh, and then you don't leave this in, duh, you can comment it out. That's for explanation purposes. All right, P. Euler for A. It should give us 906609. Pretty sure this is correct, but if it's not, I'll feel like a big dummy. <laughs> big stupid doo-doo head, you know? But it should be good. We'll see, though. If it loads. And we are correct. Hey, the answer you gave is correct. You are the 375,975th person to have solved this problem. Difficulty rating of 5% because, you know, we're still brainless here. That's okay. Highest difficulty of salsa far as 5%, but yeah. There is your code. There's your answer, 906609. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, cool. If you didn't, well, that's okay too. It took me for... I, I messed with characters and character arrays and other stupid garbage that I didn't need to. And then didn't end up getting the right answer anyway. But this one... I did a bunch of stuff, checking if they're palindromes or not. It was it was very painful, but <laughs> this is a simple, elegant solution. Um, I did have to Google 
I didn't, well, exactly call it how to reverse a number, but I did look up how to reverse a number. I did not look up the answer to this, but I did look up how to reverse a number, so it was not completely legit or however you think, but yeah, that's how I did it. Um, I'll thank you all for watching. I do appreciate it. The next one we'll go over is uh, number five, the smallest multiple. I think going forward with this, I'll do more of these, these sort of, uh, synopsis synopses of the answer and how I got to that conclusion and, and why it works so I'll do this more in the future and then I might like stream or something to where I'm actually doing the problem because it might take like two hours of boring googling and other nonsense so I'll just do like a synopsis of this going forward problem five and on and then I'll probably provide a link to a stream or however I, I did the other thing but yeah thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one where we do the smallest multiple <laughs>